Wilson, is that? Checkpoint four. Come on, we can. Oh yes, it's time for another gravel ride of the week. We're back at the Locust Hill Preserve just outside of Culpeper for this, the Dirty Kitten Gravel Race. This is surely a race with lots of character and you can thank the DJ at the event for the inspiration for that 80s intro. He was cranking out some true hits all day long. The course for this race consisted of a 20 mile loop around the property. I was entered for the 60 mile race consisting of 3 laps around the course but longer as well as shorter events were also taking place throughout the weekend. The privately owned farmland where the race takes place is only accessible to riders during the Dirty Kitten Gravel events and with the experience that I've gained from prior Dirty Kitten events at this venue it almost felt like having some home turf advantage. Follow along as I zip around this course during this action-packed race. Let's do this! I went to this event ready to race and the adrenaline started pumping early on. The first climb up and over Cedar Mountain quickly filled up the legs with some lactic acid as the pace began to heat up. I was feeling so good during that first part of the race and I finally felt like I was actually in it to win it. Normally I'm just surviving somewhere in the back of the pack but this time I was mixing it in with the action chasing down brakes and stirring up the tempo near the front of the group. Race mode on. We were making our way through a part of the property where the gravel is much rougher. Having ridden this course before, I made the strategic decision to run a much more aggressive setup on my bike. I opted for my 650B wheels with 50mm tires. Over this bumpy surface, that decision began to pay off. The extra comfort and stability that I got from my setup actually gave me a bit too much confidence through some of the technical sections. In places like this grassy field and the chunky gravel forest trails that followed, I got way too eager and found myself leading the charge for extended periods as I tried to break up the pack while we passed by some 80 mile riders who started earlier in the day. This course contained lots of loose gravel corners and if you picked the wrong line you could easily slide onto the side of the road. Fortunately I kept it upright but did slide to lose a few positions from time to time. Clearly my earlier attempts to break up the pack wasn't all that successful and a sizable group 
were still together as we headed towards the biggest challenge on the route, the famous Kitten Crusher Climb. This climb was no walk in the park. But some walking was surely required by many to get to the top of this super steep climb. This was the perfect place to really put down the hammer to split up the race once and for all. A fast and technical downhill took us down the other side of this climb and my wider tires once again came in super handy. The hard effort over the climb did the job and the group was down to only 4 riders. Now we just needed to keep a steady pace for another 2 laps. The Dirty Kitten women's racing team was well represented at this race and Sarah Williams, the most creatively outfitted rider on the day, took 3rd place in the 80 mile event. After passing through the finish line banner and heading back over Cedar Mountain, the group was back to 5 riders. I decided to back down the pace just a little on the second trip around the course since the race winning moves wouldn't start until later and I needed to be ready for when they did. This 60 mile race that I was competing in was only a small part of all the racing taking place on the day. Elsewhere on the route, the 80 milers were duking it out in a hotly contested race, while many other riders were also putting in excellent performances around the challenging course. Let's catch back up with my race to see how it all unfolded towards the end. First, there was another trip up the super steep Kitten Crusher climb. I was once again giving it all I had in the hopes of cracking the rest of the group. And then there were three. For the last lap and a half, I rode with two teammates. This gave them an upper hand when it came to playing the tactical game. Now, let's get to that race winning move that I mentioned earlier. And all you aspiring racers following along, watch and learn. Teammate number one goes on the attack. I have no choice but to close the gap by myself since teammate number two is not going to roll through to help chase him back. Then. Just as I call my way back to the breakaway, textbook tactics continue. I'm waiting for teammate number two to attack and boom, sure enough he goes. I get straight onto his wheel, he sees that I'm still there and kicks once more and that was enough to crack me. Game over. Well played boys. Don't think that I didn't try to chase him back. At this point, I had emptied the tank and even cramped up a few miles later, allowing teammate number one to easily pull away from me. So close to the finish now. We gotta go up that kitten crusher one more time. Third place right now. Really wanna hold it. 
Let's get this done. Woo! Getting crusher done. Now, just a few rollers to get me to the finish line. Oh yes, I was super happy with my first ever gravel podium. Now all that needed to be done was to enjoy the post-ride food and the festivities that go along with this race. Alex and Chris once again pulled off a great event. Huge thank you to all of the volunteers today. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything else because I'm getting emotional. Those people just are super awesome. All right, that brings us to the end of another gravel ride of the week. And as you saw, I got a podium. I'm really excited about that. Um, definitely did not expect that today. I came out here just to have a blast and I sure was able to tick that box. But at the end of the day also, my strategy paid off very well. Um, I came here with some prior experience, having ridden this course at the Dirty Kid and Gravel Grinder last year and then also the Grally Cat event. So I knew what to expect with the chunky gravel that's out there on the course. So uh, my strategy to run a size 650B wheel with the chunkier 50 millimeter tires on there paid off. Uh, felt much more in control, much more stable um, out over those uh, rougher surfaces. Well, thank you so much for joining in and uh, riding along with me in this gravel ride of the week. My overall goal with these videos are just to inspire others to get out there on the gravel roads and go and do a ride of their own and if you're one of those people who then uh, are inspired by my videos then that's job done from my side so uh, once again thanks for tuning in thanks for riding along if you like this video please be sure to hit that like button and do subscribe to this channel we'll be back with lots more gravel ride of the week videos in the future until next time i'm vian enjoy your ride